Comcast. Minions. Yeah! The bunny from Secret Life of Pets. Past the place that you come from. Tuneration. Also, every single cartoon has one of these whooshing moments through a rock arch. If it's not 100%, it's at least half of them times two. Is a town like your town? If your town was a dream, only it's not a dream. This back and forth poetic bullshit is what happens when you let someone imitate Dr. Seuss. Is it a dream or is it not? Or a better idea, get on with the plot. Fresh peppermint bread! Jesus, who's our insane workaholics and entirely too obsessed with bread? 8 a.m. until midnight? Who needs bread this many hours of the day? The pop-up book nature of these stores looks pretty cool, but how many injury lawsuits do these store owners endure when they open their shop next to unsuspecting customers? There you go, kid. Have a wreath. Socialism. Sled pulling. Also, is this a bike town when it's not snowing? How do people get around then? Well, Scott Mosier did co-direct this movie. He knows a lot about snowballing. Haha, -ha, this stupid asshole thought he was gonna sail his boat today with all this snow everywhere. What a dumb motherfucker. This is a clear ice skating hazard when these people are done fishing for the day. Is there a law that requires you to put up a barrier or a cone or something to warn skaters not to come anywhere near here? Man, I bet it was murder getting all this furniture up the mountain and up all these stairs. And the Grinch is not the type of guy who has any buddies who can help him with this shit. The joke is, no matter what the Grinch does, every station is playing Christmas music. But it's December 20th. Why does he even have the alarm clock set to any radio station right now? You know they started playing Christmas music right after Halloween. Also, radio is playing decidedly human Christmas music from all different eras. At some point, I demand to see an old black and white film showing Eisenhower greeting a bunch of Who's in the Oval Office, setting aside their differences to battle their common enemy, the Snorks. The Grinch rings his bell from the bedroom, but is there another bedroom where he could be ringing from? And if there is, why not name it something like bedroom number two or smash Room. His kitchen is well stocked, but how many plates does one isolated hateful Grinch need? The lyrics say, who is this mean fellow with his skin all green and his teeth all yellow, but he has the pearliest teeth I've ever seen. If Mold Spice is a brand that makes you smell terrible, then why take a shower? I'm getting some Adams Family vibes with this character that are going to leave me confused and horny. Did anyone think twice about Grinch genitalia until this moment when we see his bits covered by underwear and the hairy green pants? I guess we can all thank this movie for causing us to now consider Grinch Grinch wedgies, and skid marks. And really, Grinch mating habits, come to think of it. I am not going to Whoville during Christmas! Is there any reason you need to go to Whoville? You're apparently within range of several radio stations. If the Christmas spirit in Whoville hurts you so much, why not make a longer trip to somewhere else? Come on, man. These assholes are the kind of assholes who leave their door open and expect the wind to close it. Yes, the Grinch hated Christmas. How could you tell? Now, please don't ask why. I wasn't. Also, I've seen insane inventions during our introduction to the Grinch, but he doesn't have a cool way to zip down the mountain? He has to trudge through snow with his dog towing a f***ing red wagon? But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. Armchair cardiologists sleeping on people. Stockholders. Looks like all the stores use the fact that these people are called Who's to their full advantage. Who Foods, Who's Hungry Bakery, She Who's. After a day in this place, you'll be looking for a Who or a House. This home has normal cups, plates, bowls, and utensils. So how is a two-headed scrubber helping clean anything? And sure, maybe we're supposed to give all nonsensical susy things a pass, but if you have normal dishes, you don't need an abnormal tool to clean them. This mother is making so many questionable decisions. She's serving piping hot toast to toddlers without waiting for it to cool. And she named these kids Buster and Bean. These poor, poor children. So this kid needs to mail a letter, and in order to do this, she has to ride a twisty ice street from an insane height down to the city? This town has everything but personal mailboxes? Here goes Cindy Lou Who as she dashes through the snow with a very important letter! Oh no! I'm gonna miss the mailman! Gee, for a kid no more than three feet off the ground, it sure is amazing you can glance to your right and see through a building down to the city below. Also, let me get this straight. Everything is great in Whoville, but you only have one chance to mail a letter in any given day? Oh no! Cindy Lou's probably gonna die, and that's hilarious. But I don't understand why she waited until December 20th to mail her Santa letter. She's gonna ask Santa to give her mom the gift of happiness because she worked so hard to make others happy. So either she didn't notice that her mom was awesome until now, or she procrastinated sending this letter to Santa. I don't care if she's a kid, she doesn't get a pass. This wagon of goodies strains more credulity than the one in Over the Hedge. And Grinch has gotta go up a mountain with this stuff. This is incredibly late to be putting up this many Christmas decorations in a self-reported Christmas town. The mayor wants Christmas to be three times bigger this year. Unquantifiable executive orders. And I guess I'll see you in about a month. Wait, it takes a whole month to get to the North Pole? Oh yeah, at least. So you'd see her in two months, not one, unless the round trip duration is baked in, which it doesn't sound like it is, and you're bad at math. I hope you die. Okay, you're right, that's too far. Oh, cool! Whoville goes by the Byzantine standard of changing the day when the clock strikes 7 a.m. 
the Grinch has to stop his alarm clock because f Christmas music, and I'm all for that, but with minimal effort, man. Hauling and hurling a dresser takes so much energy. Plus, you lose a dresser. Try fire. Blowtorches solve so many issues. I understand this represents the minimum distance that Grinch wants to maintain with any living thing, but why does he need it? A small table where no one else could sit would suffice. Plus, he has Max trained pretty well, where he could instruct him to stay on the other side of the room, or even in a different room entirely. Motherfucker. Yet another movie where someone plays all by myself when they're all by themselves. There are other songs of isolation out there, like Nine Inch Nails' Closer. Sure, it's not strictly about living alone, and this is a family movie, but since Grinch isn't singing the lyrics, he could at least play the instrumental and you could still get a PG rating. By the way, let's discuss how f***ed up this pathway up to the organ is. There's a smooth roller coaster like path leading to what is finally stairs, no handrails, and very little room for air. Earlier, when Grinch used this chair elevator, he came up from his dressing room. Now it's saying that he's doing this from the organ room? Get the dick out of here with your impossible home logistics. I feel like there was already cheating going on in this game, since Grinch doesn't have one piece on the back row. And checkmate. Again. Man, the cheating is one thing, but not even knowing how checkmate happens is entirely another. You might as well not even bother. So wait, did Whoville's tree-finding crew also find a giant star ornament out in the wild? Just wondering why the founders of Whoville felt the need to hyphenate the name of their town. Catapult has basically been following the laws of physics until Grinch got inside its bucket. There is no way a lanky Grinch keeps this thing from falling off the cliff. With no home of his own, no mom, no dad. Because despite being shown a colorful town filled with kind people, we need a way to give the Grinch a reason to be isolated and forgotten. So here's a loveless orphanage bathed in shadow, everyone. They'd stand hand in hand and the Who's would start singing. Ooh, ooh, did they do Won't Get Fooled Again? Bob O'Reilly? American Woman? I must stop this whole thing. Super agree, but right after a solid reflection on the miracle of your being alive, right? You know, considering you just launched off a mountain and plinkoed your way down a 7,000 foot tall Christmas tree. But why is there a plunger on the side of the organ? Why? The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. You mispronounced was. The Grinchy of the opera is there inside your mind. I see the Grinch bought one of those chalkboards that'll only be useful for a joke later. Yep, and add this to the list of impossible items to tote up a mountain. Oh, hey there, Mr. Cubbins. But, but where's the massive street flume from earlier? And if the mailman passes your house, why did you have to race to the bottom of the village earlier? And if you have this rad scooter, why would you ever have used the inner tube? Disrespecting books and education and birds. Holly Lane Street. Jesus, these who's are a mess. Why name a Lane Street? I mean, clearly the city planners are on massive amounts of drugs, but someone needs to stop them. So. What do we know? We know that the waffles were in the bag with a bowling ball and should be pancakes right now. We know that you left that bag in the sled and shouldn't have waffle pancakes at all right now. We also know that you should be dead from a fall, so nothing really matters. I'm gonna sit in the living room with my eyes wide open like this. And if I start to drift off, I'll just open them wider! Is she trying to meet Santa Claus or is she trying to avoid Freddy Krueger? Ooh, ooh, can it be both? Also, how do we get all that syrup on the roof? Yeah, because it must be hard to think about how ladders work when you're wired to surf along rooftops without using your brain. Oh well, let's just start by finding ourselves some reindeer. Makes sense that a genius inventor would traverse the frozen wild and retrieve a large animal. You know, rather than invent something. We've hit the mother load. We'll have 100 reindeer to pull up! <laughs> You know in Wreck-It Ralph 2, The Reckoning, when Ralph became a YouTube star doing stupid sh That's what this entire goat sequence feels like to me. Haha, -ha, goats, they scream weird. Remember those YouTube videos? Sweet, I do too. Well, Santa had eight. He looks like he ate the other seven. I've gotta say I enjoyed the Grinch's half ass Santa Clausery in the original, where he turned the dog into a reindeer. But if you're gonna settle on a giant reindeer for your ruse, why even bother becoming Santa in the first place? The whole point of Santa is that he isn't seen. So looking the part shouldn't even be a factor. Why complicate matters by taking a wild reindeer just for appearances, just in case somebody wakes up while you're robbing the place? Wait, what the who the when the hell did the hedge maze of a million lights get here? Why is everything instant? Movie introduces the rest of Cindy Lou's established friends 39 minutes into the movie. And they'll get like a scene or two and be gone forever after except for a token appearance at the end. Why did she only spend time with the red-headed kid until now? Thanks for getting here so fast, guys. Follow me! And so Cindy Loop-de-Loo proves that she is the littlest, biggest asshole and leads the kids through a light maze to the visage of Santa, which I can't see here at all, so that's probably another sin. Anyway, she leads them to the big guy to tell them that she's going to trap Santa. And then after the kids agree to whatever plan she says, To the bikes! Yeah and makes them walk back through the maze to their bikes. Just tell them at the gate and get on with the plan already. We're gonna trap Santa Claus. I'm sorry, my ears can't register anything insane unless it's said by Nicolas Cage. 
So the Grinch has a gray and black beanie with a magic scarf. Doesn't it feel more like his vibe? I mean, why wear the candy cane stripes that haunt his dreams when he has this drab option at the ready? I see the Grinch went to the Red State School of Mask Wearing. When you translate the barks, it reads, you better come take a look at this. However, because the Who's ignore the dog, they also ignore the cliche. Now I've consulted the sin manual and the sin of the bark is countered by ignoring a cliche. And that means, holy sh how did that dog get in the house so fast? The Grinch peeks into the room and here comes Mr. Bricklebomb, presumably from the front door, which is now in front of him for whatever reason, which caused me to wonder if this insane Who house has multiple front doors and I missed something. A quick check tells me this door is the entry point of the home, where Bricklebomb brings the dog inside. Side window, front door, and blue wall in the background. Great, except where is the small window beside the front door? And opposite the door, the blue wall has been replaced by a massive fireplace. Is there a door on the other side of the house? No, just this larger window, which should be the back side of the fireplace. From this angle, we can see into the dining room, but there should be a goddamn slot from the dining room to the front door. That shit's obtuse. And before you tell me the windows are higher up the walls, they are not. And there seem to be two additional windows and the roof is shaped differently. And that was clearly worth all the time I spent sending it. Apparently nobody at the party sees this shit. Not even this woman who's got a front row seat to it. You sleep in your bed and I sleep in. It's at times like these when the dog and the reindeer want to sleep in the bed with the Grinch that I wonder what that other bedroom is being used for. There must be some serious Fifty Shades of Grinch going on in that thing if they can't sleep there. Now that is a great cup of coffee. It's weird. I didn't even question the dog being able to make coffee, but I have so many about the wild reindeer being able to make it. Because of course there's a drone. How are there still reeds that need to be hung up around town? Two days ago, the whole town looked reeded out already, and they had multiple giraffe teams putting them on people's houses and shops like their firstborn would be killed if they didn't. I know the mayor wants three times the Christmas, but this reminds me of that time Chris was an assistant manager at a theater in New York. A bunch of people spent a week sprucing up this one theater for the Spider-Man 3 premiere, and every goddamn district manager descended on the place to tell everyone to clean some really stupid just in case Sam Raimi or Tobey Maguire decided to do an all-points inspection before walking on the red carpet. The point is, you don't need this many reeds. If one house doesn't have one, then Kirsten Dunst won't get mad. This is a highly intricate map. Who built this? And when? Grinch was out all night getting a reindeer and a sleigh, then came home and went to bed. This morning he woke up and Max droned Whoville, and they just returned. How do things magically come into reality in this world? And why can't we see that movie? I mean, it has working lights. But I can see the string. Stop worrying. It'll be dark at night. What if he has a flashlight? Rupert would be amazing at Cindy Lou's stupid plan sins. Hmm, what do we have here? To further prove that Cindy Lou is a repugnant evildoer, she asks her friend to tumble down a chimney rather than, oh, I don't know, simply test the cookie trap. The cookie trap so dangerous that it launches his clothing out of the window. That could have been him, and nobody's pissed at Cindy Lou? Well, I am. Do I still get to eat the cookie? Yes, Grouper, it's touching your tiny hoo weenie. Nobody wants it now. Man, Grinch did so much pimping to this sleigh, it makes you wonder why he even bothered stealing the one off Keenan Thompson's house. God damn it, I can't promise anything, but from now on, I want to add 50 cents for this slow motion bullshit they put in every single f***ing animated movie. If Fred was a married reindeer with a kid, why did he so willing to go back with the Grinch earlier? I mean, this asshole acted like a lost puppy dog, like he finally found a friend and now we find out he's got responsibilities? The Grinch has shown he has a heart many times throughout the story. He's sweet to Max, and in this moment he releases Fred to his family without much hesitation. Will it be such a leap to believe his heart will grow bigger? Does he really need music to push him over the edge? I mean, he's a sweet guy with a tragic backstory who doesn't want to be chased through the streets by carolers. And can't we all relate to that? By the way, they spent 15 minutes with this traitor just so they could fall back on the original story where Grinch can slap some antlers on Max and make him the reindeer. It's like the original cartoon Snyder Cut. All right, eight hours till Christmas morning. That's 28,800 seconds. Nerd! Because you deserve everything you want and more. She does not. Here we go, Max. Let's see what you've got. Yeah, little dog, your only hope. I mean, except that in a few minutes, we'll see that the sled is fully capable of propelling itself forward without depending on you in any way. But go doggy, your master wants to see you struggle. From the studio that brought you the Bruce Almighty Moon, here's another Bruce Almighty Moon. Grinch did some amazing planning that we didn't see for this entire movie. Everything the movie's shown so far is him being a bumbling idiot who does everything half-assed. But then he whips out all this shit on us. I would have traded all that wasted time with the reindeer Fred to show him perfecting his inventions. Is this house a studio model? Who builds a house with a bedroom accessed by a hobbit entryway? Any asshole can go to the window and see you who f***ing. The inventions are so amazing, I'm wondering why he even bothered storing everything else on this sleigh. Why didn't he just set up another catapult to fire all the bags of toys back to his place? Or a sleigh with a bigger trunk? And now we all pretend that not one who woke up during the great heist. Nobody had to piss in the night. Nobody has restless leg syndrome or insomnia. Oh sure, there's like one sleepwalker, but he was a Palpatine the whole time. Jesus, is this Jeff Bezos' house? I'll let you know, just give me a minute. Cindy Lou's mom doesn't hear any of the commotion downstairs. If you close your eyes and listen, all of your sadness just goes away. 
Great, so Cindy Lou has the solution to sadness. Remind me, why does she need to tell Santa the solution rather than walk down the hallway and directly tell it to her mother? Who would do such a thing? Who would stoop down this low? And then one little girl realized she might just know. Meanwhile, Max struggled beneath the weight of the sleigh, which had grown to the size of 40 LAs. See, the Grinch could propel it without any effort, but forced Max to strain till his tendons were severed. He didn't steal Christmas. He just stole stuff. Christmas isn't here. Oh, so that's where my BMX dirt bike I asked Santa for when I was 12 went. And besides, I already have the greatest gift I could ever get. You. Your twin brothers, not so much. Look, I understand Whoville is a utopian society where they believe in the spirit of Christmas more than the consumerism and whatnot. I could argue that the very fact that these houses were packed to the gills with presents as a counter to that philosophy, but I'll accept their bullshit happiness here to say this. I've always wondered why the Who's don't even question how this happened. The theft of all their presents doesn't even make them wonder if there's someone out there who might commit more crimes. It's like that Ricky Gervais movie, The Invention of Lying, only it's The Invention of Criming. <laughs> This works. I'm not saying I want to see the Grinch's legs fold backward until his heels touch his ears. I'm not saying we should hear the sound of his legs popping out of socket or his pelvis shattering. But I am saying he survives this. Oh, f a bunch of you. Why did Fred even come back here at this moment? Tarandro ex machina. Also, never mind that this sleigh full of gifts is probably a ton or two. A syphilitic reindeer and his family can drag this back with their teeth while digging into a snow-covered mountain while battling f***ing gravity. And so the Grinch is reunited with his beloved friend and immediately abandons him on the mountaintop. This story is great. <laughs> Guys, nobody is pulling the sleigh. This thing is autonomous. I, I can't. I will give every sin back if they include the part where the Who's descend on the sleigh like flies to and fight over who gets what. Ah, uh, that's gonna get old. Considering you already have a squeaky toy, this should be no surprise to you. But why? Why allow a small child to travel out of the village up a death trap cliffside pass covered in ice and snow to visit a thief? Good question! Glad that's the focus here. Movies suggest that Cindy Lou came up here on her inflatable donut thing, forgetting that I know that entire trip was uphill. Come on in! I'll show you around! I think she forgot that he's been there already. Oh, here, let me take that for you. Too soon, Grinch! Too soon! This is my first Christmas dinner. What happens? You'll see. Turns out, nothing happens. To kindness and love! The things we need most. A Merry Christmas to us all. God bless us, everyone. Oh my God, I shot my eye out. For some reason, you all want to wear the CinemaSins Pitchfork M on your body. So we slapped that f***er on some new merch and threw it in the store. Posters, hoodies, socks. Click on the merch below the YouTube player or click the store link at cinemasins.com. Race officials toss pine boughs on the course so the skiers have some foreground depth reference. I don't care if his head is in a f***ing fishbowl, just tell me he's alive! Sam! Sam! Tell him to stop! So, uh, what do you want to do today? Try to take over the world. What do you know about life after death? I wouldn't know anything about it. You talk an existential being or anthropomorphic deity. And I just asked him for a turtle. I like turtles. All the trimmings! All the trappings! Put it a sting! We pour it on the roof, the reindeer get stuck, and then they can't fly away. Science! That just makes no f***ing sense. I mean, it's just bull Oh my, 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 my. Rick Sanchez, you son of a bitch! Need some people for a thing, Glar. My name's clear these days. I play piano. Oh, it's a big thing. Tommy, 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 Tommy. Now that is a great cup of coffee. God damn, Jimmy. This is some serious gourmet. It was me. It was me!